Hello friends, uh, today I want to show you something that I learned about uh, hardware and software cursors with uh, Unreal Engine and we are developing for our game uh, Plane Shift because I had uh, the same problem uh, uh, while trying to configure hardware cursor for our game so um, I'm not an expert of it so I just uh, you know googled the information and put it together and at the end I managed to, to have it work and so I'm just giving to you what I learned so the first thing that I learned is that there are hardware and software cursors uh, that you can use. And actually you can see those in the configuration of Unreal Engine. Uh, in fact, if you go under user interface, under project user interface, you will see hardware cursors and software cursors, right? And I asked myself, okay, what's the difference? So the difference is that the hardware cursors are drawn directly by the GPU. Uh, so basically the GPU has a, a method to overlay a small picture directly on the screen and so is managing natively this functionality and to move the cursor you can just drive some variables directly on the GPU and so it is done for you by Unreal Engine so you don't really need to do anything on that but um, basically the point is that the hardware cursor is moving the point uh, and is not uh, requiring a redraw of the portion that had been covered you know by the cursor and so uh, performance are better on the other side software cursor are just uh, a widget that you create in a real engine and you associate it to your cursor and uh, so you have all the capabilities and, and power of, uh, of a widget uh, so in summary we can say that the hardware cursors have less latency and they are a better you know more responsive experience for the user but they may be a bit harder to customize now i think you can still do it you can still change it on the fly and do some animations with it but i think it will not be as intuitive as for the software and hardware cursor now the youtube video that i've seen they are just pointing you to this part of the Unreal Engine configuration, but it is not really solving my problem because in my case, I don't want just to set up my cursor this way, but uh, uh, I want to be able to, uh, you know, load it, uh, load it on the fly or anyway, load it from, from the disk. And also I want to be sure that it's packaged in my packaged game. But basically the way you do it, you just click on add here. This line will not be uh, present before, uh, will not be present as a default. So you just click here and you add your uh, cursor path. Now the cursor path is very important to mouse over here because under the cursor path is actually explaining you how the thing works. So and also is explaining you which kind of files uh, are read and how they are read. Basically what I understand is that if you want to go multi-platform, you need to use a PNG a file, while uh, if you are on Windows, you can also use other format like uh, any file or curve, right? But um, my problem was that this one was not really picked up the proper, uh, the proper way uh, in a packaged game. So when you package, basically this file, which is pointing to a slide directory in your, uh, uh, in your system, is not uh, packaged, right? And there are some information saying that if you just name it Slate, it will package, but at least for me, this was not the case. So it is not solving the problem. Uh, the difference, please be very careful on the fact that uh, these files are PNG, they are not U assets, right? So this means that this is not a texture inside Unreal Engine, but is actually a cursor that lives in, uh, in this directory. Uh, and so you need to be to be sure that you include uh, this cursor um, in the packaging, right? So to do that, to include it in the packaging, you need to go under packaging and actually force the directory to be added specifically. So there is a section here under packaging, which is called additional non-asset directory to package. So basically directory that contains files, which are not U assets, but are normal files like PNG and you want to um, package anyway, right? Uh, you have this nice um, file browser, so you don't have to type it. You just, you just find it uh, in your directory and it doesn't have to be Slate. It can be anything because it can be any directory that you want. I would suggest anyway to have in that directory only those files that you want to package and not other uh, existing U assets just to avoid you know, messing up. 
Uh, and basically here it will add the path from content, from slash content down, right? So I did this, I tested it, and finally in my uh, game, the, um, the cursor was showing properly. Now, there, is a, there are a few problems though. So the first problem is that um, on, specifically on Windows, uh, uh, for what I've seen, uh, your uh, cursor is not showing immediately, it's showing only when you re-enter the window. So you have to exit, to your, uh, exit the window uh, of your app and enter again with your mouse and then is, uh, uh, is actually initialized. And it is a problem that is, uh, I mean, if you Google it on the answer app is, is very well known and there are also answer for it. And basically the answer is to create your own uh, game port, uh, game viewport client and basically override the init file. Now, I was not really sure how to do it, so it took me a bit to understand how to do this, but I can show you. So basically in the project settings, uh, if you search uh, uh, viewport client, right? Under uh, general setting of engine default classes, you can change the uh, game viewport client class that is uh, that is pointing, right? So you can you can use the standard game viewport client, or you can use your custom um, my game viewport client, right? And so what I had to do, I basically had to do this, so to change the class. And I had to add a, a new C++ class. Now to add the C++ class is very simple. You just click on File, New C++ Class. And uh, you basically have to click on Show All Classes. And then you search for Game Viewport uh, Client. So you will have to derive your um, C++ class from Game Viewport Client. I don't think there is a way to do it with Blueprints. So I think you have to do it this way. And so basically you create your class. When you do next, next, create class, it will basically generate for you a file uh, like this one. Okay, so which is very simple. Now, uh, what you have to add to this file is this line, which is the initialization of the, um, of the game viewport. And you have to override uh, this method, you know, uh, in the CPP calling the super init and then calling this mouse enter. What makes the difference is this line. So this line is basically forcing the engine to reinitialize the hardware cursor um, all the time. I mean, all the time when the viewport client is initialized, which is which is at the beginning. And so when I did this, I could finally have, you know, my uh, mouse cursors, my overridden mouse cursor uh, properly set uh, properly set and, and working without having the need to go back and forth between uh, the window and outside of the window. Uh, so if I launch the example, I just have a key. When I press M, the cursor appears and you see that uh, in this case, I had to do, I had to go out and in and out. This is because I didn't recompile it with my change. Right? I can, I can show it to you again. You see that you see the Windows cursor, but if you go out and then you go in, the mouse is now correct. Okay, so this is because uh, I didn't switch and compile with with this change, right? Because it was like this because I was doing the test, right? But if you uh, if you add this line, then it will uh, properly show uh, and immediately show. Okay, so this is all I wanted to show you. If you want to check our game, is uh, uh, planeshift.it. It's an MMO game which is free to play and we are porting it to Unreal. We are pretty much done with it, but still there is some work. And if you want to join, you're welcome to join. We have a kind of an open development um, cycle. So yes, thank you and bye.